high pressure and the friction, ah, baby. that's what turns coal into diamonds. Huzzah! Yeah, what's up, Snoop? All right, man, when you releasing that new expansion? When you release that new album? <laughs> you look very cute in that mocap suit. This mocap suit? You like this one? <laughs> yeah. How would you two uh, kind of sell this show to newbies that are perhaps unfamiliar with it or maybe not into gaming? Well, I know that the way that Rob always pitches it, which is that he, um, I think Ubisoft reached out to him and was like, and it was like, are you interested in making something in the game space? And he was like, I don't know. I don't really know much about games. And then he went to, I think Ubisoft Montreal and he was going on a tour and he met this guy who had like long hair, a bunch of rings on his hands, a cane. He just had like a look. And Rob was like, oh, so what do you do here? And he was like, I build worlds. And Rob was like, all right, that's a TV show. So, <laughs> so that's kind of, I think, what uh, the, the sort of seed of Mythic Quest was. How would you define Iron and uh, Poppy's relationship? Do you think they're definitely just friends or do you think it could ever be anything more than that? Charlotte? I I'm playing it as definitely just friends. I mean, I think that they, I mean, they're almost like brother and sister in a lot of ways because they have known each other for such a long time. They have, they sort of at each other's throats all the time, like siblings. I mean, at the end of the day, I mean, I kind of think of them as being best friends that hate each other sometimes. Um, they certainly belong together. Um, and sometimes that's conflated as a romantic relationship, but um, we've always looked at it almost as if we're two halves of the same brain, as if we're the same person just bifurcated into these two very imperfect, narcissistic, difficult, but also um, can be wonderful and gifted and genius individual. Um, was there anything you guys planned or had in mind that you weren't able to film in the end or you did film that didn't make it in the final cut? Yeah, we shot an entire episode that we filmed in the bitch. <laughs> um, <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We shot, I mean, we shot an episode um, in its entirety uh, the week of March 5th, whatever it was, of, of 2020. And on that Thursday, Charlotte and I, uh, or on that Friday, Charlotte and I are on horseback oh on a gosh, beach. Oh my gosh, that scene. Yes, on a beach somewhere in Malibu. And um, I was getting calls saying, I think we should shut, we think we should shut down. I'm getting all this information and I'm like, okay, let's shut down. We shut down and we never went back. And we have five days of that episode. And what we realized was, I mean, two months into the pandemic, we realized that the episode didn't make any sense anymore. And we had to, and, and, and we had to scrap it and start over. Do you think any of that could ever see the light of day? Or is that, is that gone, gone to the ashes now? I really <laughs> hope that at some point people get to see me on horseback because I looked great. It's interesting. We started filming season two last March, um, and then we got interrupted with uh, with the pandemic, obviously. And and then we had to. I know the writers had to really re-break and uh, redo a lot of season two um, based on on everything that happened and everything changed, and also health and safety protocols. So a lot of things had had just changed naturally. Um, but for us, we were just so happy and excited to be back on set doing our walk and talks. Um, and that was one of our first scenes. And I just remember Jesse and I taking off our masks and walking through a crowd of people and being like, oh my gosh, this is the strangest sensation. Walking through these people and matching hands and you know, being as evil as we can possibly be. And um, it just felt really wonderful to be creative again. But yeah, I think, I, I think we did everything we set out to do <laughs> this year, but we're just excited to keep going. It's great to see Snoop Dogg making a little cameo in there. I wondered if you have any backstory about how that backstory how that um, came about. <laughs> I was intentional, I swear. <laughs> uh, he was so great to work with. He um, he showed up with a bunch of ideas for improv lines he wanted to throw in there. And, and in the show, he gives us a little performance. And I thought maybe we would get 30 seconds of a performance or something. And then we found ourselves, you know, receiving a full on personal concert, uh, pri private show. And so that was that was a really exciting day when he came and joined us on set. And it was fun for me, too, because that episode has one of my best friends in the world, Parvesh China who is my brother in season two, comes on to the show to play my brother. And in the scene, I'm watching our patient Snoop Dogg <laughs> in this scene together. And it was just very surreal because I, again, it's two people who I never imagined colliding in front of me. And it was, uh, it was just a dream this season. There was a lot of fun surprises. What were your favorite memories from making this season? Was there any like fun pranks or silly, silliness going on behind the scenes? 
<laughs> Rob had to come in and tell us all to shut up at one point because we were singing, that we were making up a song and singing so loudly. I can't believe how <laughs> it felt like we were at summer camp. We were singing, I don't know what it was. We were just like doing like a round robin singing and like clapping our hands on our legs. And he was like, we're making a TV show. Like you guys have to be quiet. And, um, and then in episode seven, um, David Hornsby's plot line is so funny. And he was being so funny. It was so hard to get through a single take. I just remember crying. I was laughing so hard. Everlight was really fun because we got to do yeah. some uh, some fight training, which was really, really exciting. And it's nice because this is a comedy show and then you get to do something like fight training. We're not we're not a mean prank group, but we had a couple nice pranks. Our, uh, our co-creator, writer, Megan Gans had her first episode as a director and she's also our friend. So we made her four hats. One said director, one said writer, one said producer, and one said friend. And we gave it to her over the course of a month on every Friday. And, you know, had this kind of sappy joke about how she wears many hats. And so that was fun because it, it was a long joke that played out over the course of a month. So that was really fun. I mean, we were so lucky that we got to go into work with a bunch of people that we I mean, I love everyone that I get to work with. I think all the cast are really close. And when you love your job that much, it does feel like such a blessing to, especially in the circumstances of last year, to be able to safely go in and keep doing your job. So, I mean, every single day was a highlight for me. That's the, I, that sounds um, kind of corny, but it's the truth. Murray, first up, I wanted to ask, what attracted you to the character of CW? Because I think he's definitely become one of my very favorites in this series. and. Um, it felt like a bit of a departure, maybe, from some of your more uh, sort of like drama work as such. It's it's not a departure at all. He's very much like me, like <laughs> I am. But uh, he's he's one of my favorite characters I've ever played. Uh, I played Bottom, and he reminds me of Bottom so much. Uh, uh, he's not a departure at all. In fact, uh, if I had a choice, I'd do comedy only comedy. It's just. Uh, I love to make people laugh. And thank you for saying that about him, because I, I think he's a terrific character. I'm glad you like him. Please be wearing a shirt. Yo. Where's your shirt? Didn't feel appropriate, David. I'm in a hot tub. Oh, my God. I was amazed by the lockdown episode that you guys did. I'm, I wondered, was it hard to decide how much to fold in coronavirus into this series? Um, well, yeah, because while we were re-exploring uh, re the second season and rewriting it, we didn't know when the quarantine would end, how people would feel about it. So we were sort of projecting ourselves into the future and thinking when this comes out in May, um, we might still be in quarantine, we might be done with it, but we just took the bet that probably people won't want to keep hearing the word COVID uh, over and over again. And we really wanted to design the second season to be in a world that was post COVID and that had uh. subtle references to the fact that those characters had lived through that experience, but that wouldn't, we didn't have characters in masks and it was a time when everyone had been vaccinated and back to work. Um, to that end, we did the special quarantine episode that dealt directly with how people were feeling in lockdown. And also we bookended that with our special Everlight, which is about that transition from quarantine back to the workplace. And we hope those two episodes will allow us to spend a second season where we're just getting back to like fun office hijinks. Um, have you guys ever discussed what a season three could ever look like? No. <laughs> No way. Too far away. No way. I, I learned a long time ago, having done the other show for so long, I learned a long time ago that you, you can't, when you're acting, you, when, when you say cut and it's the end of the day and you're driving home, you're no longer acting. You leave that behind you. When you're writing, because it's all in your own head, if you don't uh, compartmentalize, then you're trapped in that and it can, it can eat you alive because you're thinking about it constantly, driving, showering, when you're trying to sleep. Um, um, and so I've, I just made a concerted effort to be able to, to lock that out and only think about uh, the next season, the first day of the next season. Um, if Murray's in for season three, then I'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> I love you. <laughs>
in the spirit of computer games, is there any Easter eggs hidden throughout um, either series that you could like hint towards or tell us about? Sometimes our interstitials are from different video games, and you should look for one this season we've taken from Horizon Zero Dawn. I noticed episode that. That's yeah. voiced by a Ashley Birch, who plays Rachel on the show. So that might be a fun thing for people. <laughs> we also have in one episode a real video game um, sort of celebrity um introducing poppy at an event so people should look out for that person because she was so nice to uh come on set and be a part of our little world and rob i know you bought wrexham fc with ryan reynolds um and it's a big day in football today with the, the sort of rumors of the super league uh kind of i wondered if you'd ever work on another project with ryan and ever think about doing something with deadpool 3 because i know he's had lots of other comedians involved before and you've kind of worked on this amazing marvel style physique now so i wonder if that's something you'd ever be up for I just want to go on record uh, in saying that nobody wants to see Deadpool 3. Deadpool 2 was derivative. It was unnecessary. And I believe that Deadpool 3 is just, I mean, really beating a dead horse. And this is from coming from a guy who's, who's going to do 18 seasons of a television series. <laughs>